So what happens now that we, in fact, know that matter is a wave? Well, this allows us to try to go back and explain some phenomena that, over the years, mounting evidence was building that couldn't be explained. Um, so for example, when people, and we'll talk about this next class, were looking at different characteristic spectra of different atoms, what they were seeing was that it appeared to be these very discrete lines that were allowed or not allowed uh, for the different atoms to emit, but they had no way to explain this using classical physics. Uh, and it turns out that the Schrodinger equation is uh, an equation of motion in which you're describing a particle by describing it as a wave. So you're basically having a wave equation for a particle, and for our purposes, we're talking about a very particular particle. What we're interested in is the electron. So basically describing electrons by their wave-like properties. And this is Erwin Schrodinger, and this is the equation that he put forth where we have uh, h hat psi being equal to e psi. So uh, let's explain what these are. So this symbol here is actually what we call a wave function. That doesn't mean a whole lot in itself. It will mean more in about two lectures from now. Uh, but right now, what I want you to be thinking of a wave function as is just some representation of an electron. So it's some way of describing an electron. Specifically, we'll talk more about this. It's talking about different orbitals. It's the spatial part of an orbital. But before we get to that, in terms of thinking, just think, OK, this is representing my particle. This is representing my electron. That's what the wave function is. This E term here is the energy, or in our case, when we talk about an electron in a hydrogen atom, for example, the binding energy of that electron to the nucleus. So E is binding energy. And H with the caret or the hat here, well, that caret or hat tells us, it tells us it must be an operator. And this is called the Hamiltonian operator. So when you operate on the wave function, what you end up with is getting the binding energy of the electron and the wave function back out. Well, we need to describe uh, the wave function term a little bit more specifically so we can describe, for example, the position of the electron. And I just want to mention that we do have two choices if we're trying to describe this. We could use Cartesian coordinates or we could use polar coordinates, uh, where we're either talking about x, y, z, or r, theta, and phi. Um, so I just want to point out that when you look at wave functions, we are going to be using those spherical polar coordinates. And the reason is because a very important interaction here is the interaction between the electron and the nucleus, which we want to describe the distance of in terms of r. Uh, so you can see it's much easier to describe that as one term r here instead of using both y and z. Uh, another reason I wanted to point this out uh, in terms of the polar coordinates that we're using is I think they're actually flipped from what you're used to seeing in physics. Sometimes different, uh, different disciplines have different conventions, which can be very confusing because the whole point of what's happening now is there's so much interplay between different disciplines. Uh, but still, I think this might be one remaining one, uh, where in our case, theta is that distance from z, that angle there. Uh, where phi is this distance or angle from the x-axis. So just keep it in mind that it's flipped. It turns out we won't really be using it, uh, needing to identify it on the graph so much uh, in chemistry. We'll be using the solutions, so you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, but I wanted to point it out so it does not look too strange to you. Uh, in terms of the Schrodinger equation, we now can write it in terms of our polar coordinates here. So we have uh, the operation on the wave function in terms of r, theta, and phi. And remember, this E is just our binding energy for the electron, and we get back out this wave function. So you might ask, this looked pretty simple up here, right, just with that h hat. It turns out we can write it out fully. It's, a, it's three different second derivatives in terms of the three different uh, parameters. Uh, it's a little bit complicated. You won't have to solve it in this class. You can wait till you get to 1803 to start solving these types of differential equations. And hopefully, you'll all want the pleasure of actually uh, solving the Schrodinger equation at some point. And uh, so just keep taking chemistry. You'll already have had 1803 by that point, and you'll have the opportunity to do that. Uh, what I want to point out also is that this is h hat, the Hamiltonian operator, written out 
for the simplest case we can even imagine, which is a hydrogen atom where we only have one electron that we're dealing with and, of course, one nucleus. So you can imagine it's just going to get more and more complicated as we get to uh, other types of atoms and, of course, molecules from there. So we just want to appreciate that what we'll be using in this class is, in fact, the solutions to the Schrodinger equation. And just so you can be uh, fully thankful for not having to necessarily solve these as we jump into the solutions and just knowing that they're, they're out there uh, and you'll get to solve it at some point, hopefully, in your careers. So we'll pick up with that with some of the solutions and starting to talk about energies on Friday.